The Fantasy Six Pack Hour. With your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, you're awful. And AJ Applegar. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu Chu. It's a mouthful. Alright, alright, welcome back to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me as usual, AJ Applegarth. What's going on, man? Uh, a few things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, get, we'll, 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 we'll get to we'll why I'm laughing. In a bit. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah. It is week 15 of the 2019 NFL season, semifinal week, at least hopefully semifinal week for all of you. If it's not, uh, y'all got problems. Um, how you doing in your league, man? You still alive? And the ones that you were? Yes. Uh, I guess I'm technically out of the toilet bowl in my dynasty league because it is like you if you lose you move on it's it's totally bass backwards I, I don't know so uh, okay you tank yeah. and so you could just like sit everybody and continue it's cool all right much. but there's no like award of the first draft pick for winning it so it, it doesn't even matter at this point <laughs> okay so um, yeah who cares don't care about that um as you know i'm in the semis for the f6p league going up against richard seville yep and uh, in my home league, I came off the bye and am facing, uh, I can't remember which seed it is. I guess it's the sixth seed, technically. Cool, cool. Yeah. So, we'll see yep. We'll see how it goes. Um, and then I'm, I'm in another toilet bowl in the hunt for the first round, or first overall pick. And uh, in the... The other league, I'm, I'm in the semis. So, pretty decent overall. Cool, man. Yeah, I'm in, uh, I'm in all my leagues still. I uh, had Scott Fishbowl. I moved on to the conference finals for the fourth year in a row, four to four. So, I'm hoping I, I, I can break this, you know, cross over this mountaintop, man. It's been so close to the actual final finals four years in a row. Um, and then had a bunch of first round buys, obviously in those, and then the, the couple first round matchups I had, I did, I did win. So looking good there, looking good there. So, um, right now we are watching the Ravens and Jets about 12 minutes ago in the third, shockingly still a close ish game i mean this game should actually be a lot closer the jets missed a field goal they went forward and fourth and like two from their own or from like the 10 yard line or something like that didn't get it uh and then threw a pick on like the 30 yard well really on like the five yard line in the first half but they were on like the 30 it was just like a bad pass um but like one of the drive that they scored on or something like that, or the drive that they didn't get it on fourth down, it was like a nine minute drive. So the Ravens have twenty one points, but um I mean I with the game started out Ravens just marching down the field every time they wanted to, just scoring with ease. I thought this game would be like thirty five to zero by now, but kinda hanging in there. Um all right, so the, the big news the big news, the big reveal Tonight, the uh, Fantasy Alarm Series XM Fantasy Football Pie Bet. So for those of you who do not have any clue what we're talking about, uh, on Twitter, the guys from Fantasy Alarm, Howard Bender and, the, and the, the crew there, they started a Fantasy Football Pie Bet. Uh, they've been doing it all year. We, you and I finally jumped in like last week for the first time. I kept meaning to, just forgot. Um, anyway, the whole idea is they pick four receivers, one each. There's four of them that do it. And then for them, the one who finishes worst, who picks like the worst receiver for the week has to take a pie to the face and then they donate $10 to the children's fund. Um, now other people can get involved. So how do you get involved? 
you pick a different receiver from the four. And then if you finish better than you just have to finish better than just one of their guys. You just can't be the worst. So uh, then if you are the worst, then you have to take a pie to the face, record it, post it on Twitter, uh, hashtag fancy football pie bet, uh, fancy alarm, all that kind of good stuff. And then those guys will donate $10 to the children's fund. So it's a great cause. It's all fun. Uh, and it's definitely fun when my co-host loses. Uh, so he'll post it on Twitter tomorrow because he has to. But we wanted to have some fun here and see this video for the first time tonight on the podcast here. So you guys are going to be seeing it first. We'll post this on YouTube tonight. And then this will go out first thing tomorrow morning, and he'll post his video tomorrow afternoon, I think. But uh, yeah. let me let me see if I can figure this out. All right, so I think I've got everything switched over. First time I'm trying to do something like this. I hope all the audio and stuff comes through. All right, so I'm going to press play. Hello, Fantasy Alarm and Sirius XM listeners and fans and hosts. My name is AJ Applegarth, otherwise known as at Applegarth Algar. I lost the week 14 pie bet, uh, hashtag FF pie bet, and I picked back. Devontae Parker. So yeah. thank you for that, Devontae. <laughs> I am ready to de- take my pie to the face here. Um, glasses off. Thank you. I was wondering about that. Please enjoy the show. <laughs> oh, man. That is phenomenal. <laughs> And the last, the best part. Signing off. Oh, man. That's the best. The laugh's the best part. That is great. Ah, oh, good times, man. Good times. I'm so glad you. Uh, uh, how'd that feel, man? Uh, it felt pretty good. Uh, <laughs> Did it? I didn't know how I wanted to have my beautiful wife, Heather, do the pie in the face. Oh, it's all up to her. It has nothing to do with you. Oh yeah. Well, I yeah, we were we were debating on possibly having um my older daughter Olivia, who you heard in the background, um try to do it for me, but I it just she didn't want to do it. Yeah, it was uh-huh. like, she was just like, "No, no, daddy, I I don't want to put a pie <laughs> in your face. Your face has to stay clean." Uh, but, but it's for charity. It's for a good cause. I, I want to do it. It's fine. Uh, and she That's just wants to have it. That's so, funny, dude. Yeah, it was it was pretty good. Um, no whipped cream, though. No, I I meant to get some tonight and then just got held up late at work. And it's not as messy as it should be. Do it. So It's all right, though. Glad whatever. you did it. It was good. It was a sweet potato pie for those who are curious, and uh, it was quite delicious. I did eat some of the the remains after it slopped off my face. Uh, I did post the picture to the. I the saw that. I saw that. that that's uh, you know the after shot uh, with pie still stuck <laughs> to my nose. So that was that was fun. Uh, but yeah, it was. Uh, it was good. You know, I. I wouldn't mind getting back in again this week and seeing if I can, you know, get back to uh, to my winning ways since I got the first week I did right. And yeah. Then, uh, Devontae Parker was, was not so good to me this past week. Yeah, I mean, injured super early in the game. There's nothing he can do. He got a bunch of people. He was a popular one, man. If you saw the tweet, he, he was a popular pick uh, big time. But, uh yeah, man. No, that was fun. That, that was fun to see. The, the laugh, I've seen a few of these videos, like when the wife or the girlfriend does it. The laugh is the best part, dude. Um, yeah. It is absolutely the best part. I love it. And so, yeah, your wife, uh, she did. That was that was good work. Nice yeah. and hard. That was a good, firm slap, dude. <laughs> well, and I, yeah, that's kind of like, she's like, well, should I have, like, let go, like, right as my hand is, like, close to your face? I was like, no, just just straight through. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just enjoy this one. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Let's let's continue on. That was good. That was really good, man. I enjoyed that. All right, man. So we got our beer of the week. Let's do this. Mm. 
beer. So uh, I'll let you go first, since you uh, took a pot um, of the face. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm drinking a little easy tonight, uh, thanks to the pie. Um, still recovering from that, but I'm. I'm drinking uh, good old Stella Artois. All right. Um, it's interesting. Yeah, I. Uh, I mean, it's it's only five percent alcohol volume i think these bottles are actually only like 11.3 ounces or some weird number um but i mean it's a super easy drinking good beer and you know i just i don't have any newer ipas that i haven't already drank uh on the show in the fridge right now that's all right and uh yeah so Stella, stella's the choice and i will probably be finishing a couple of them in the show because they're such easy drinking beers all right. Because I took a pie to the face. <laughs> All right, man. Mine's a uh, a beer that our friend Jason brought over uh, a couple Fridays ago that I've been saving up. It is from Ardent Craft Ales in Richmond, Virginia. It is the IPX IPA X. Um, super good, man. I gave it a four and a quarter. Uh, it's got Citra and Mosaic hops, so two of my favorite. You know, it's super like, um, it's really light tasting kind of thing. Uh, it's not super bitter or anything like that. Um, this is <laughs> kind of bad. It's, uh, it, it is an easy drinking IPA as well. I'm trying to take my time with it, but not succeeding. So, um, yeah. Anyway, it's a uh, whatever. Anyway, that's what we got there. All right, so news and notes, man. So we're going to cover a lot of these big-time injuries that that happened this offseason here, um, or offseason, week 14 into week 15. Like we're, you know, we're, we're struggling. Everybody seems to be struggling with these. But I just want to, before we get into this, I just want to have a quick word of advice to everybody for, for week 15. Look, it's semifinals. There is no more such thing as start your studs. Right? Like, it's win or go home. So, you do what you got to do. Um, it, if, if, if I've got a guy like Odell Beckham Jr., right, who is dealing with an injur- injury, but playing through it, and also playing like garbage, as we've mentioned numerous times on this show, you know, I would look elsewhere. If you have a worthwhile option, you know, look for the guy who's been hot, has a good matchup type of thing. You know, I'm not just going to say, hey, go out and automatically play X player because you drafted him ahead of this guy or this guy's a free agent and you drafted this. Guy. Like, no, you you got to stop doing that. Um, it, it just it doesn't work at this time. You're basically playing DFS with your roster, and the waiver wire. Now, you're not dropping guys that your opponent is going to be able to pick up and play and do better than you to pick up a, you know, you got to be smart about it, but you can essentially play DFS with the available players. So that's just the way I I would go about it, and I always do. So just a word of advice. (laughs) Yeah, just to piggyback off of that, at the same time, same stance for me. I mean, I'm looking at my team in, in my home league where I, the only one that I actually had the buy last week. And then this week, I really don't love the matchups for my players. Um, you know, including Mark Andrews, who we were talking about before we start recording. I, I benched him in that league because of his potential injury issue. Who'd you put in its place? Uh, Ian Thomas. Yeah, uh, that's I mean, I just, it's not it's really not know. terrible. That's not terrible. I did have I did have Andrews ranked higher than Ian Thomas, um, but I did put Andrews lower this week than I ever have all all year after like week three, right when we finally realized, all right, this dude's for real. Um, yeah. I mean, I get it. I started Higby over Andrews in one league because um, yeah, it's a, it's a fairly good matchup for Andrews. I mean, although if, like tight end numbers, it's not. But the Jets are banged up, and the Jets stink, dude. Um, you could just kind of figure like Andrews was probably going to get something going here, but 
he's injured. You didn't really know how much he was going to play. I, I get that move. Like I'm not, I'm not totally opposed to that move. Now, look, I'm not getting totally cute, man. I'm not, I'm not going out here and picking up like a guy who had a 20 point week last week, but like does nothing, you know, the rest of the year, and playing him over like, I don't know, Julio Jones or somebody because like, oh, Julio Jones has been kind of banged up and not really playing all that great. Blah blah blah. Like, no, 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 no. that's getting cute. Yeah. But like, if you have a guy like OBJ who just hasn't been performing. And you've just been throwing him out there because he's OBJ. Then you, then you gotta get you gotta get smart about it at this point. You've you've probably gotten lucky to get to this point, you know, with o, playing OBJ every week. So just be smart about it. So, I agree. all right, man. Let's get into these uh <sighs> these injuries, dude. I mean, this is gonna be a, a whole injury show, unfortunately. But you know, we're gonna talk about some of the replacements, and I'm gonna let you lead the way here, man. All right, so first injury we have listed here is uh, Mike Evans. And basically, he's got the hamstring that he's dealing with now. Um, You know they obviously have Chris Godwin. Uh, You know they've got Rashad Perryman now. I didn't even realize he had quit his job bagging groceries at Walmart to pick up another football gig. But... (laughs) There he is. Um, and then uh, the last guy we got here is Justin Justin Watson. Um, this is going to be their their wide receiver core for this week. Uh, you, you know, you can see on the slide here that the, the stats that these guys put up. And Godwin obviously had the most receptions and the most yards, but he didn't have a touchdown. So that, that definitely hurts. I don't think that's going to be the same this week against Detroit. Um, you also have uh, OJ Howard. So yeah. maybe he's going to start getting more involved. Finally, I feel like he has been getting a little more love lately, but he, he was probably the biggest tight end bust of the year this year. Uh, uh, just about him and Vance McDonald were, were kind of neck and neck there. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. I don't know this, this uh, this is a tough one. It sucks, man. I've got I've got Evans in two leagues that I had a bye week, and I think I'm toast in both because of it. Um, and you know, yeah, Godwin's gonna eat, man. Godwin's gonna get his. Um, out of the receivers, you know, Perryman and and Watson. I mean, you know, we we saw Perryman got a lot more snaps, but he's kind of on the field more before the injury anyway. And then, um, you know, Watson came in and, and, you know, saw more targets and stuff. You know, he, I don't think anybody thinks Perryman's really all that good, but the opportunity is going to be there. So, like, if you're desperate, then, yeah, go with Perryman. Um, Watson's also a decent option, probably not too far behind in the rankings. The guy who I think is – it's crazy to even think this right now. And Lamar Jackson just threw a touchdown. To, was that Hollywood Brown? Yeah, Hollywood. Awesome. Nice. Nice little toe tap at the back of the end zone. I'm uh, there. definitely going against him in fantasy six pack, uh, Mr. L- Mr. Lamar. Oh, you didn't get it. Foot down? No. Did he? Oh, no. Oh, there it is. Oh, he's dragging. No, he was dragging. There you go. All right, I was gonna say. Fuck. Maybe not. I don't know. That's like, super like, close. I don't know, man. That's gonna be close. They're gonna review this one. This is gonna take a while, I think. Um. Because when he finally, it looked like when he finally got it down, it was out. I can't tell. So it's down there. But it's up. Dragging, is it up? Dragging is it, it right there, unless it's coming up. I don't know. It's so hard to tell. It's it's black shoe on black on black turf, man. They're gonna count it. I don't think they can overturn it. Yep. No. All right. Well, there you go. Cool. Lamar's already got over twenty fantasy points. Yes. Phenomenal. Thanks. Anyway, back to this. Uh, O.J. Howard. I think he's gonna be the biggest biggest beneficiary of this man i think uh you yeah. know those guys those those teams that are hurting a tight end take a chance on howard i mean he played well last week honestly um he yeah. saw you know i think it, i think he caught i don't have the stats up i did i don't miss my window <laughs> there we go um yeah he he caught like four or five passes something like that Four passes for 73 yards. I mean, I'll take that. <laughs> you know, I, I think they're going to have to utilize him now in the passing game. 
I just don't think there's any way around it. You know, yeah. it's going to be hard to rely on Perryman and Watson to to do this. Um, to do this every to do this, you know, every week and be consistent with it. I think Howard is a good athlete and can get the job done. So that's where I would go. All right. So moving on to the next guy we have here is Mr. Calvin Ridley. Um, he is dealing with an abdomen injury. So we saw basically uh, Deshaun Jackson dealing with an abdomen injury early on through the middle of the season and basically until he was finally put back in for maybe three plays, re-injured himself, and was done for the year. So hopefully Ridley's not dealing with the same type of abdomen injury. Oh, well, Ridley's already out for the year. He's on the IR. Oh, is he really? Oh, yeah. Well, I did not well, know. Welcome, welcome back. <laughs> yes. So, don't pick him in DFS this week. No. Uh, not going to help you. Uh, my bad. It's been a long week, and I got a pie to the face, so maybe it knocked the, the brain cells I had loose. Mm-hmm. Excuses anyway. me. Julio. I mean, obviously, he's going to get the ball a lot. Uh, Russell Gage has been good in recent weeks. Um and then you got Blake. I mean, uh, there's good guys. So, what do you what do you think of these guys? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, Julio gets a, a slight tick up, but you know, I'm talking he's already a top five, ten receiver every single week. Anyway, what are you gonna really gain? Um, you know, Gage has been solid, dude. Um, you know, last week didn't really do a whole lot for whatever reason, but he's had some good weeks. So I, I kind of like him. He's He moved up my board quite a bit. The the other two guys, like, I, I just don't really know. I mean, yeah, this Olamidi Zacchaeus or whatever, Zacchaeus, I don't even, I just destroyed that name. I mean, he had one long catch, 93-yard touchdown. Okay. Um, you know, Christian Blake was – was zeros as far as uh, as far as catches last week, but he he's the guy that I think could be sort of sneaky. Um, he had a decent week the week before, um, and I'm trying to. I got too many windows open, man. I need to do a better job of this. <laughs> Here we go. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he had a he had a decent week the week before and kind of was like who's this guy um caught yeah six for 57 against the saints um and so and that was with ridley ridley healthy but julio was out so you know with with ridley out i'm wondering if blake kind of slides back into that more you know i'm gonna be the other primary receiver guy role you know after Gage, I think Gage is obviously the, the number two for real. But the number three, which, yeah. hey, has proven to be worthwhile. I mean, that was yeah. the Muhammad Sanu role for a couple of years. That was Russell Gage now, you know, toward the end of this year. Like, the third receiver is a good receiver, a good, you know, kind of throw a dart at it flex play in some cases receiver. You know, low-end, cheap DFS play receiver. Like, it's okay. Um and yeah, the the game that Julio missed, Blake led them with total snaps, with yeah. ninety. So, I, I'm just saying, like, I'm not, I'm not like hanging my hat on it, but I think if you're in desperation, that's the one that you need to go after. So, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I, I think the the big thing here is is basically like you said, a. The third receiver's always been fantasy relevant, but these are guys that are going to have a really low floor, but they could oh, have yes. a really good feeling, too. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The total Darth Rose. It's the boom bust. Here, but worth a shot if you need it. Yep. Uh, so the next, uh, next guy we got here is uh, Josh Jacobs. He is practicing on a limited basis right now. Still dealing with that shoulder injury. I mean, he's been kind of banged up all year, I feel like. Well, apparently, he's had the shoulder, like, 
this pretty major shoulder injury since week, I want to say seven. That's crazy. At, at least. I mean, he. I feel like after week one, he was dealing with little tick. Well, yeah, whatever. Thing. Everybody is. But, yeah, this was like yeah. a, like a, what are they calling it? A shoulder um, fracture? I think it's what they're calling yeah. it. Like, that's insane. So, I don't know. Anyway. Whatever. So I mean, is he a must start for you, or are you avoiding, avoiding him and thinking he might be limited again in the game if he plays? Dude, if if he plays, I don't see how you can. You know, if he's active and he's out there, and they're not saying they're gonna like, you know, just kind of mix him in. Now, if they say something weird like that, then no, I won't start him. But I think if he plays, he's gonna be the guy, right? Yeah, you're risking re-injury and like he could just pull an Adam Thielen and be like nope never mind guys I'm out um but the Jags have been abysmal in the run game uh this year especially lately and the whole team's just kind of fallen over um I I think you 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 really want a piece of this Oakland backfield this week whether it be Jacobs or if he's out then it's Washington uh, that's the guy you want because he's going to get most of the carries. So, yeah. um, and, and you saw last week, you know, yeah, it was like, you know, it was like 66% carries for Washington, 33% for Richard Richard. And, um, you know, but, but Washington got, you know, twice as many yards, got a touchdown, caught six passes like that's where I thought Richard would would have thrived was in the re, in the receiving game but he got six receptions to Richard's two so clearly Washington's the guy that they trust more so yeah, yeah. you know if if Jacobs is out Washington's a plug and play in my opinion he's a top 15 running back most likely yeah I, I agree Washington had an awesome week last week yep. and uh you know, there's there's nothing wrong with playing him, especially if Jacobs is out, to plug him in immediately. Yep. So, <clears throat> all right. So that brings us to my your favorite, favorite man, and yours, <laughs> Devante Pie Parker. Uh, Devante Sweet I'll- Potato Parker. I like yeah, that better. Yeah, yeah. let's do it. Sweet potato Parker. <laughs> um, and Wilson is also Albert Wilson. Yeah. Well, so uh, Devante, as you said earlier, went out early in the game with concussion. Um, you know, so so what are we looking at here for for these guys that are going to be coming in? Oh man, it's uh. It's not good, and a lot of people were hoping they could use Fitzpatrick in these phenomenal playoff matchups that, that they have. But, you know, yeah, Fitzpatrick is still going to throw a ton. But you were like, you were just banking on the fact that Parker was there and going to be balling out like he had been. And it's unfortunate because he's not going to be here this week, it seems like. He hasn't, you know, he's, he's practicing on a limited, he's doing like side work or whatever they call it. But he hasn't been cleared, so it's Thursday at this point. It's not out of the question. We've seen it happen before, but I don't know, man. I think you have to go with he's not going to be around. The guys you're looking at to fill him in, filling in for both of these guys now is Alan Hearns. Um, you know, five receptions for 68 yards, and then Isaiah Ford. Go Hokies, baby! Um, oh yeah. This is a guy who I I loved at Virginia Tech, not just because I'm a Virginia Tech fan, but I thought he was a baller, dude. I, I thought he was great, and he just came in rookie year, got hurt in training camp, never got a chance, then got buried in the depth chart. You know, uh, they went out and you know they have Parker, they got um, uh, they they went out and grabbed Albert Wilson from Kansas City. So he got buried in the depth chart, never really got a chance. This guy's athletic as hell, but he's also raw, right? Like, you just don't really know. I'm not trusting either one of these guys, honestly. Um, I just, uh, you can't do it. You'd have to be in, like, a 16-team league to 
to even consider starting either one of these guys, in my opinion. And, of course, Andrews just gets a nice ball for lots of yards. Oh, lovely on my bench. <sighs> All right. God, you're like the pie that already hit me in the face tonight, Andrews. Anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, Hearns, I, I, I don't know. I mean, we, we saw that he could be potentially productive in some games when he was with the Cowboys, but he was with the Cowboys. So they are a better team than Miami, as much as I hate to admit it. Um, although, did Miami beat them? Maybe. So maybe I'm wrong on that. Yeah, I, I don't like either one of these guys, bottom line. No, uh, no, we can move on, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's not worth it. The, start your studs over these guys. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> Good call. Marvin Jones to the IR. Uh, Out of nowhere. It was like Tuesday. It was like, oh, Marvin Jones on the IR. Excuse me? Yeah. What? Wait, wait. He so, finished the last game. What the hell happened? <laughs> uh, I mean, and this this would have been a great matchup for him in Tampa Bay uh, or, or against Tampa Bay. So... Now you're looking at Galladay. You're looking at Amendola. I mean, what what are you are you Galladay? I feel like is kind of a, a must start regardless. Yeah, but Amendola. I mean, is he <sighs> become a must start? You know, in PPR leagues, I wouldn't call him a must start, but he he's up there. Um, I do have my rankings pulled up. I'm trying to figure out where I've got him in PPR. Uh, well, I look at half PPR. Um, cause that's what, that's what fantasy pros default is. So let me go to those real quick. Sorry. I had the QBs up for some reason. Um, so Amendola for me, ooh, he's a little farther down there than I thought 46. So, I mean, he's fluxish range. I mean, probably. Probably not. I mean, he's been pretty bad. I mean, and David Blau, you know, it's going to be, I don't know. He's, I don't think he's anybody you can really rely on. I mean, honestly, like, um, Galladay would have had a terrible day last week if it hadn't been for, like, a last-second touchdown. He would have been, like, five for, like, 30, but he caught, like, a 17-yard touchdown late or something like that. So it was... It was pretty fortunate for him to, to get that final touchdown. So, I mean, yeah, I would say I'm a dull is more of like a like a DFS option. I, I I'd have a I think at this point, if you've gotten this far in fantasy, I'd have a I think I'd have a tough time starting Amendola over a lot of my other roster. So, yeah. I mean, I like the upside of Amendola, but definitely more in PPR, full PPR, um, half PPR. It's still nice. Um, oh, my goodness. Roberts, touchdown. That's God. Cool. Lamar's going to go 40 points on me in, in fantasy six-pack. Damn it. Yeah. It's going to be bad. Yeah, probably. He's got 30 already. Four yeah. touchdowns. <laughs> this is the Rams game all over again, man. 13 for 19, 181, and four touches. 70 yards rushing. Like, come on. It's not even fair. He's just every, like a fourth of his passes are touchdowns. <laughs> it's insane. Phenomenal. Gosh. Run, run, throw. Uh, run, 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 run. <laughs> That's the steer, the story here. So, can All we right. bench him in the fourth quarter already, please? Anything? I'm dying so, here. <laughs> let's move it on. Move it on. Talking about another team of birds. Um, I'm gonna let you have this one. They're basically stool pigeons at this point um, because I they're just getting shit That's, on left and right. Oh, that's Alex. funny you say that. Because <laughs> I love the I love the slide that Keith Lott put together. Uh, 
Oh, I love it. That. And for some reason, the color doesn't come through. It comes over like he's a... I, I don't even know. I don't know why it comes over like that. Like the, the brown doesn't come through, but marshmallow, but still either way it's, it's uh kind of looks like a poop in prison or something. He's got like prison stripes on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> pretty fitting for the Eagles. Prison works. Um, works. So yeah, Alshon comes back, injures his foot. You know, this was like a <laughs> He did not do a damn thing. But he didn't do anything. Course. He injured it like in the first quarter or whatever, man. It was bad. So, but look, we got Aguilar out. We got Deshaun out. We got Alshon out. Uh, um, I think a white side injured his hamstring, but apparently he's okay. Um, got Ortega, him and Ortega white side. If you're Booger, Booger McFarland. Every every time the Eagles are on Arthega, Arthega White Side. Dude. Pronounce damn name. Anyway. Sidebar. Yeah. Um yeah. Everybody. What do we do here with the Eagles? Like in how okay, look, like, you're clearly not starting any of the Eagles receivers. This is Ertz, Goddard. Um, you know, Sanders is gonna get fed out of the backfield big time, even if Howard is back, which is, you know, looking shaky still. Um what do you do with Wentz? I mean, Wentz kind of you know put this team on his back and really kind of willed them to a victory, but it was the freaking Giants. I mean, yes, yeah, the Redskins, they're not good either, but can he do it again with, like, nothing? I mean, the Eagles were getting their asses kicked in that game. Uh, I mean, let's not sugarcoat that. And I think they went in going, oh, it's Eli. They, they, yeah, like, <laughs> As was everybody Eli. else. Guy's been sitting on the bench since week three or four. You know, whatever. We're good. And he's been playing like a bench player for three years. So, you know, there you go. (laughs) Came out hot. And and their defense, Giants defense, was good. You know, they were getting to Wentz. Wentz was still making his usual crap-ass throws that were completely inaccurate. So, I don't understand how they won that. Aside from that last drive in overtime was phenomenal i mean if they could have done that every drive of the game or at least 60 percent of the drives of the game you know they'd look like a a playoff worthy team um but yeah everybody's injured i mean you're looking at greg ward so uh you're looking at uh Boston scott basically has dude he is literally the reason that game was won by the way Oh, yeah. He was phenomenal. He was game. incredible. And, um, and, I mean, when he's gotten his chances this year, he's been not that good because that was kind of an outlier, like, career-looking game. But he, he's been pretty good. And he, he can get up. He can go. He's a small dude. And, you know, he kind of took over that Darren Sproles-type role. Yeah. So and, what and do we think the- about Wentz? What do we think about Wentz um, this week? I mean, I mean, I'm not starting him. If I have a better option, which I did, it was Lamar. Uh, um, <laughs> I, I don't even think. <laughs> Why do you even own Wentz still? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. Um, I, I mean, know. it is Washington. Washington is really bad. I mean, is there any hope that Wentz could be like? The Giants are really bad, and they—he still they, scored twenty fantasy points against the Giants. Hey, he scored twenty fantasy points against the Giants. Yeah, he had a good game against them because they had to throw the damn ball because they got behind early. You really think Dwayne Haskins is going to get Washington up ahead of Philly early enough that Wentz is just going to have to bomb the ball? He's got nobody to throw it to. He's got two tight ends, and and. Eagles can't third, run the ball anyway, third, but anyway, practice, wow. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't love it. He's a very – I do have him ranked 13th. Risk, I, I just – The high-risk, high-reward plays. Yeah, it's – And I'm staying away from him. I mean, yeah, like I said, I, I think Boston Scott's going to win us the game again this week. I, mean, I well, unfortunately first, first time, in, in six-pack have Winston, who we'll talk about in a minute, uh, and then I've got Wentz. I've got Winston in, but I might have to pivot to Wentz. 
and I hate it, but because uh, Winston has this phenomenal matchup, I just yeah. it sucks, man. So yeah, talking about the injuries here, let's move on to the rest of these injuries and just kind of rifle through them here. So starting with quarterbacks, I'll start with I'll start with um, with Winston since I kind of started on that path already. You know. He's got a fractured thumb in his throwing hand, and how the hell this doesn't just knock him out completely, I have no idea. But somehow they're saying he's day-to-day and he's probably going to play. Although I hear today that he's throwing tennis balls at practice because he can't grip a football. Well, that's a problem. Tennis anyone. (laughs) I mean, come on. So I'm sitting here just throwing like, oh, my gosh. I, like – Kept my season alive after Wentz went in the crapper by picking up Winston in our league. And, um, you know, my wife actually in our family league is in the semis. And she's got Winston. And I'm going like, you might need to go find another option. And there's like zero on the waiver wire because everybody has two quarterbacks this year for some reason. Like in every single league I'm in. Like it doesn't even matter. Um has gotten injured at some well that day. too like there's been so many injuries and so everybody just hoarded quarterbacks they were like well this sucks go get everybody <laughs> uh so yeah it's it's you got to keep an eye on this Jameis thing who knows what's gonna happen it, like i've got him ranked number six right now but it could change real quick if, if this news does not get favorable um so dak prescott's also in the injury report you know he he sprained his index finger um but they played Thursday, so it sounds like he should be okay to play, but that's still kind of, you know, that's not helping his cause at all. He's been kind of playing meh anyway. Um, good matchup, though. Um, uh, so, well, mediocre matchup. Uh, Dano Jones will not play in Week 15, so another week of Eli, the book of Eli. I mean, how many times do we hear that Monday night? Like, my God, I wanted to meet my damn TV. Come on, ESPN, you're better than this. Um Hey, there's uh, Peyton. Early. <laughs> I know, right? Peyton came out to watch his brother one last time. Uh, guess what, dumbass? Uh, it was phenomenal, dude. Like, <laughs> they cared more about brother. Peyton than they did Eli. It was great. Oh, uh, all right. So, some running backs here. Let's let's look at them. So, we got Devonta Freeman. He was limited at practice. I, I had no idea he was even injured. I just kind of saw it. I was like, oh, okay. Um, there's been so many injuries. It's hard to keep up with some of these, I feel like. Uh, Damian Williams for the Chiefs, he returned to practice Wednesday. I did not get the update uh, later the t- today, but um, it sounds like he might be nearing a return, which my uh, my sleeper pick there, my, my, my bold prediction of Darwin Thompson being amazing, not happening, so... Yeah, yeah, well, I picked the beard as a top three quarterback, thinking he'd have receivers to throw to. Well, yeah, at least you have an excuse. Mine is just a shitty call. So, <laughs> what are you gonna do? It was a risk, man. It's a bold call. You're supposed to be bold with it, right? I mean, yeah. I'm not gonna go out there and be like, "Oh, Derrick Henry's gonna be awesome." Well, of course. Yeah. Speaking of Derrick Henry, sure. um, it's questionable with a hamstring, but both co- you know, both coach and Henry are saying he's gonna play. So, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of. They're saying they're they're being they're monitoring his snaps or whatever it is, but um, basically it's every time he's in the game he runs instead of he stays in for the blocking and like he maybe get a little less passing work, but it doesn't matter. He's still just gonna crush because you know I hated him this year and he, just like Amari Cooper and was dead wrong. Um, Darius guys back on IR. I gotta ask you, man. If you own Geis in a dynasty league, are you just trading this guy and getting literally whatever you can for him? I mean, he's talented. We see it when he's on the field. He's talented. He just can't stay healthy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I really love this guy's upside. And, you know, I was really high on him once he was back. I I only had one league where I was able to pick him back up. Um or pick him up, I guess, because I don't think I owned him initially anyways, but he, he was good. He was really good, and then yeah. he just fell flat, and then now he's back on the IR. It's, like, literally the story of his career, and it sucks. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm trading him for 
if, if there's other believers out there, you know, try to find them. Send a trade to everybody in your dynasty league and just see who bites. You know? Yeah. I mean, I'm not giving them up for pennies, but like. Maybe, no, maybe, but maybe Nicky. Maybe, maybe, yeah, I was going to say, maybe a couple times, you know, whatever. You get, you get a dime? Damn, you're, you're in business. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's time to move on, and I think in Dynasty with this guy, like he's just his knees are shot, dude. I mean, it's another knee injury, unfortunately. Jordan Howard, he did practice Thursday. Uh, I think it was limited, but you know that's sort of a good sign. Bad for Miles Sanders, but you know that's a good sign for the Eagles, who are desperate for anybody at this point, as we mentioned. Out there, I know, right? James Conner, uh, he can he's going to suit up this week, and then. The big news, Rashad, Rashad Penny, Seattle, on the IR. After two monster weeks, everybody thought this guy was going to be something down the road, you know, to the finish line here. Gets hurt early. Chris Carson owners are rejoicing, and I, <laughs> sadly, I'm one of them. Uh, I've got him in, like, three different leagues. Uh, I kind of was like, whew, save my ass. Uh, not that I'm hoping for anybody gets hurt, but... I'm not going to lie. I wasn't super sad when Richard Petty blew his ACL out. So, um. <laughs> I also was not super sad. Um, suck it, Keith. Uh, uh, oh, man. Did he have him last week? Just kidding. Not Well, about the suck it. Uh, but, yeah. Yes, you did. I, I Stop it. Go you know you I did. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You know, suck it. You lost. <laughs> <laughs> you lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you beat him by a point point one two? A point one point one point one two points. Oh my goodness, yeah. that was a hell of a matchup, dude. Wow. Up eight points and change, or seven and change, whatever, going into the nightcap game on Sunday. And I was like, Great, he's got Penny. I'm done. Oh, and he gets hurt then, early. Oh man. That's brutal. Two point one points, and I was like Okay, well, uh, he's still got Philly defense. All right, whatever. They're going to shut down the Giants. It's still over. wrong. <laughs> and, then, and then I'm like, great. Philly's getting their asses. And I was watching the game. I wasn't even paying attention to our matchup until I woke up Tuesday morning. And I saw his notes on the Slack saying that he wished he knew that Rashad was going to blow out his ACL and that Marlon Mack was going to start. You know, and then he, he uh, congratulated me on my win, probably uh, very angrily, but uh, I appreciated it nonetheless. Um, but yeah, I I didn't think I won. I, I had no idea until I even looked at it Tuesday morning and was like, "Wow, okay." So, yep. Sorry, sorry, not sorry about your loss, Keith. <laughs> All right, man, some receiver news here. So we got Christian Kirk limited in practice with an ankle injury. It's only noteworthy, really, because, like, he was sidelined with the same ankle injury earlier in the year. So, um, you know, this is – he's got a tasty matchup. I, I think I think you're still rolling him out there. But um, it's, it's just one of those, like, yikes, not, not great to hear. Will Fuller questionable with a hamstring. He did – he is practicing, so um, his stock is trending up. T.Y. Hilton returned to practice today. Um, that was out of the blue. I had no idea. Like there was talk that he wasn't going to return this year, but um, sounds like if he does play, though, they're going to have limited snaps. I mean, if that's the case, are you starting him at all? I mean, the last time we saw him, he looked bad. No. Yeah, uh, I agree. Pasco has been good. Uh, I mean, this is this is a really good matchup, but um, it just crushes Pascal's like I, value, I, dude. I, I have him really high this week, and I and I picked. I actually started Pascal over Crowder, who has a terrible matchup clearly, and Crowder went off in the first half, so I'm pissed about that. Now I hear yeah. Ty is coming back, and I'm going, freaking kidding me. Anyway. Uh, DJ, DJ Shark do, 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 um, has an ankle injury, has not practiced this week. He's looking pretty doubtful, in my opinion. Adam Thielen is practicing. Uh, I mean, 
They're saying he's going full speed in practice. Are we trusting this? No. So are yeah, you sitting him? I don't like the matchup as it is. Um, Chargers. The Chargers secondary is good. I get it, they, but they gave up some some bigger points to. Uh, Ooh, was that a pump block? And they missed the freaking extra point. Fucking so. dude, you're fired. Fucking fucking shit. <laughs> um. Yeah, I. Uh, wow, I, bad I game for that dude. I mean, I get that that he could play and he wants to play probably and what, i mean i'm just I, hearing he's going full so i mean that's that'd be big man that'd be big i feel like yeah um, i mean i just don't even like digs this week especially if if Thielen doesn't play it's yeah crazy. i've knocked digs down a little i mean they're they're still top-notch receivers and a good offense overall i feel like yeah. you're probably rolling out both Thielen. i'm a little iffy on but yeah, it's we'll see how the news works out here. Juju was another guy, Juju Smith Schuster, another guy that we all thought he was gonna return this week. Like that was the talk, right? Um He practiced Wednesday, now he's downgraded to limited today. That's bad. You don't like to go the opposite direction. Um, so just keep an eye out for that. I, I don't like Juju this week at all. Like I, I have him ranked pretty low, um, 40 actually. So yeah, Buffalo too. Just, I, I think you stay away from him. He's been bad even when he played golden Tate has a foot injury was limited in practice. Not another guy. I'm not high on here. Tight ends got four quick ones. Greg Olson's on the concussion protocol. Just look out for that. You know, obviously that ruins Ian Thomas's value. So hopefully that doesn't happen for you because you'd be screwed. Um, Gerald Everett. Goddard, though, in that league too. Uh, yeah, you might be all right because you know the Eagles just have the. Th- they're going to basically use Goddard and Ertz and Miles Sanders as receivers. It feels like. Um, Greg Olson or sorry, Gerald Everett uh, still sidelined with a knee injury doubtful to play this week it seems like uh evan ingram is limited in practice again i mean he was kind of limited all last week it didn't play at the last second so i mean even if he does i don't really know how much you can trust him i mean he'd probably get a lot of volume just because it sounds like maybe tate won't play and you know eli likes to dump it down to his tight ends and things like that but it's it's just not it, it there's not a good feel for for ingram at this point and then randomly I mean, the, granted, the game's playing right now. We don't usually talk about Thursday night players, but randomly, Ryan Griffin was placed on the IR this week. So there's that. Um, so, all right, man. Um, all right, let's get through these picks here. Yeah, let's do our picks. What you, what you got for highest scoring game? Highest scoring game, I'm going Lions versus Bucks. I like uh, it. We talked about some of the injuries that we're dealing with. You know, you got Marvin Jones and, and Mike Evans out, but these defenses blow goats so <laughs> blow goats be that's a new one a ton of points all right um, i'm going vikings chargers one that um you know yeah chargers got a good secondary vikings got a pretty good defense you know the secondary isn't as good as you think it is honestly uh Rhodes has not been playing great um you know chargers got some weapons vikings got some weapons i, I think we can get a pretty sneaky high fantasy game from this, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, even Thielen. <laughs> yeah. If he plays, I mean, he'll, he'll get some points, but yeah. I, I, I'm not trusting him on my end, but All right, low scoring game. The game I'm looking at Steelers bills, man. Um, again, the kind of the complete opposite of what I was saying for high scoring. Both of these defenses are pretty damn good. Um, I mean, you have a lot of talent on the field between these teams, and especially if Connor's back out there, he could potentially try to do some damage, but Buffalo's still good against the run. He's probably going to be limited um, and and go from there. And if Juju's out, Washington fell flat last week, so I don't Dante know. Dante Johnson balled out. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know if he's going to necessarily bounce back. So, that's my game. Yeah, Bill's secondary is pretty tough. Um, low scoring game for me is Eagles-Redskins. I mean, we know the Redskins' offensive struggles, right? Well, we just talked about all the Eagles' offensive issues. I 
I know both defenses can get, you know, run on, passed on, you name it. I I just, I feel like this is going to be a pretty blah game all around. 17 to 13. I mean, it's not even just like the scores. Like, I feel like you're going to get like points from somewhere. It's going to be like 27, 20. But it's gonna be like random dudes that nobody started to score. So yeah, yeah, that's what I got. Yep. So all right, sleepers. Who you got, quarterback? Um, since I apparently forgot to write my quarterback down, let me look at the rankings real quick. All right. So I'll start. Uh, yeah, my computer's not Derek responding. Carr is my my pick here? Um, we already talked about Jacksonville. Just kind of folding up and phoning it in for the rest of the season at this point. Plus, they just gave up a huge game to Phil Rivers. Now, Rivers, obviously, in my mind, a, a better quarterback than Carr, but is he yeah. anymore? I don't know. So, I, I like Carr's upside in this game. Yeah, my, my sleeper... Dude, I think now I know why I didn't write anybody down. It's sort of... Uh, I'm going to go Eli. As weird as that sounds, I'm going Eli. He's playing yeah. Miami. I mean, Good pick. I, I, we, we I, saw Eli play, you know, decent in the first half last week, you know. Um, you know, he just, as long as they can just snap two, three seconds, get the ball out. Snap two, three seconds, get the ball out. Like, that's going to work, right? Um, Slayton's been good. You know, Shepard's there. Tate, you know, if Ingram comes back, that's going to be even more. I I think Eli can kind of sneak into that low end, you know, that low end QB1 range. Now, I've got him ranked really low, just like most people do, because it's Eli. But I think he could be kind of sneaky. Yeah, I I like Eli. That, That was my other potential pick. And then I was like, wait, who are the Jags playing again? Oh, yeah. So, running back, I'm going with uh, Ronald Jones. Uh, Detroit, horrible against the run, uh, as I've kind of already alluded to. This game is going to be a shootout. Um, And he could have some pretty good PPR value with Evans out, too. Um, You know, between him and Barber, I feel like they they both could have some decent value. But I I like Jones to try to get back – get back up to some high scores here tonight or this weekend. Sorry. Uh, So mine's going to be Latavius Murray. Um, He's been literally the the Mark Ingram. (laughs) That was phenomenal because it's a pass. Uh, 37 points from Lamar now against me and fantasy six pack. God damn it. I'm going to lose a Lamar. Oh, all right. Latavius Murray. Uh, he's been better than Kamara the last, like, five weeks, dude. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, it's hard to rank him over Kamara. I get it. You know, PPR leagues, Kamara hopefully will just kind of salvage a week because he gets a ton of work in the passing. But, you know, I think Murray's just going to run hard like he has, fall in the end zone, get it done, man. Yeah. I like it. Receivers, uh, I'm going with Marcus Johnson. Uh, yeah, that's solid pick, man. We talked about him coming back, but I, I just still think he's going to be limited. Yep. Uh, if he even definitely plays, but Johnson's been good. Pascal's been really good. You know, Pascal's obviously ranked a little higher, so he falls out of our our usual run here, but. Johnson's been really good over the past few weeks too. He's he's getting his, and uh, New Orleans has a pretty craptastic uh, pass defense so far. And yeah, outside I, of Lattimore, it's it's not good. Yeah, so I, I think they're gonna potentially shadow Lattimore, especially if Ty plays. Then maybe Lattimore just dips over to him. Um, so that could open things up. Yeah, so mine's Cole Beasley. Um, I know this is a tough matchup against Pittsburgh, but you know he's had three pretty tough matchups in a row: Denver, Dallas, and Baltimore. And he has scored in all three. 
Yeah. You know, six for 76, six for 110, four for 29 in a touch. I mean, Beasley's the guy that they're looking for in the, you know, little, just great running, great routes. Um, you know, getting in the end zone. He's been, he's been great the last few weeks. And, and I don't see why it wouldn't continue against the, even just, even against the Steelers. Yeah. Uh, I like Beasley a lot. And, uh, yep. I think he could have another, another good game. So yep. moving on to our busts here, quarterback. Uh, I, I put Dak Prescott down here. Um, yeah, I mean he's dealing with the finger injury and everything, but he, I just don't see him not playing. So even if he does, um, I, I just whatever. I hate the Cowboys. I think the Rams <laughs> crush them, um, and then just end their playoff hopes even further. Uh, Jason Garrett, sorry about your luck, but you're probably losing your job this year. Um, just. It's okay. It's okay. You're, you're good at clapping. Get a hand model job somewhere on QVC. You'll be good. All right. <laughs> so my my bust this week is actually gonna be Pat Mahomes. Now look here. I get it. You're starting this guy because he's just a baller. He'll he'll figure something out, right? Um, but like, I mean, let's be honest with Mahomes. Three of the last five weeks he's played. It's well, I get no. Ignore that. Two of the last four weeks. I was going to say three or last five. It counted the game he got injured. That didn't count. Um, 16, 15 points two weeks ago against Oakland. It was only 20. I mean, yeah, 30 against Tennessee. That's, I mean, that's what you want out of him, right? I mean, 20, you'll take 20, right? But even that, like, I mean, you know, 18, 19, a couple weeks earlier in the year. Like, he's, he's good. He's great. I get it. But he does, I don't know if you guys watched any of that game but he fell awkwardly on his throwing hand in the game this past week and he was like constantly like holding his hand like holding his pinky um apparently x-rays came back clean he's fine or whatever but like they say his hand swelled up on him i don't think he's gonna be 100 percent. i think they're gonna rely on you know just easy passes because he's not gonna be able to drive that ball like if you've ever hurt your pinky, like you'd be surprised at how important that finger is to throw the ball and like grip. It's it's almost more important than, you know, like the middle finger and things like, like even the ring finger. Like it's it, it's just like the base of like it just kind of care and like really helps you put spin and drive the ball. It's crazy. Um, I've done it. I've broken my thing my my pinky finger. I literally could not hold a ball. Until it was healed, and even after that, it took a while to like get all the strength back. It's crazy. Um, so yeah, I, I'm kind of worried about Pat Mahomes this week. I mean, he's got to start with tennis balls. He's got to take a <laughs> yeah, right, and really see how how it works. Um, I mean, he's got big enough cojones as it is, so maybe he just plays with his own balls. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Running backs. Got you. You like Latavius Murray? That's good because I dislike Kamara. Alrighty. Uh, I mean, this was the highest scoring game of the season last week. Oh my goodness, that game was thought, ridiculous. He was such garbage last week, and you know, and I hate it because I love this guy, and I did end up trading him, and his like seventh or eighth round value keeper uh, to get Cook, and I'm okay with it. Because Cook's a monster, so Kamara's just down this week, this year. I, I don't know what is going on with. They're him, just not using him as much. Yeah, so, it's just the injury. It's just it's a tough matchup with with Indy as well. It's a Monday night game. You know, it, if you don't have a better matchup option, I, I guess you could start him. But I just I don't like him this week. Uh, mine is going to be Joe Mixon and I know Mixon has been, you know, awesome. Bitch. Oh my gosh. Crowder. <laughs> Thank you, brother. I have you on my bench. I'm going to lose because I bench Crowder and I'm playing against freaking. Oh my gosh. Great. Freaking hate this league. Can never win it. 
All right. Anyway, back to the show. Joe Mixon. I know he's been awesome lately. You know, me and Dave talked about him on the uh, on the last call podcast Sunday night this past Sunday about how good he's been. He's been like a top five back the last you know few weeks. He's playing against New England, man, and I know that New England's been kind of you know run on, passed on, and like the defense hasn't been as good. You know, they played really good teams lately. Since he is not one of those teams, so I am just worried that Mixon kind of comes back down this this game this week, and you know isn't going to be much of anything that you're going to want it to, that you would not have wanted to start. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that call. Receiver going Allen Robinson. Uh, I mean, he's had a great season, and he's got a tough matchup. Uh, Green Bay, their, their defense is legit. That's probably one of the biggest reasons why they are where they are in the standings. Um, aside from Aaron Jones, has been really good. Uh, he's definitely been the better AA Ron on that team. But I'm just kind of down on Robinson this week, uh, coming off of you know the, the past few weeks that he's had think this could be a little step back into reality here yeah uh so mine's tyler lockett i mean lockett's been pretty mediocre for you know a a good part of this you know last few weeks here um it's just it's not clicking i mean he's been held under 10 fantasy points the last four weeks. In fact, he hasn't gotten above six. Um, I don't know if it's injury related now, but it's just, it's not working for whatever reason. Yep. Yeah. You got me a fat zero the other week. So yeah. Thanks right. All right. Yeah. Defense is the stream. Low ownership, 40% or under is our threshold that we may Revised next season. Well, yeah, it's been okay up until playoff time when people hoard defenses. So we're kind of screwed here. So yeah, there's there's not a whole lot. You guys are starting your defenses at this point. You've got a good defense. I pray that you have a good defense because the streaming is not working this week. Um, if I have to pick one that's under forty, I went with uh, I went with the Titans. They play Houston. It's not going to be pretty. Um, but, you know, Watson at least gets sacked a lot 38 times on the season so far. So you just got to hope for a bunch of sacks. Yeah, I I was eyeing up Tennessee until I saw that you already had them. So you can just, change, change you can just agree. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't care. No, it's good. I changed my pick and I went with the G unit. Giants, baby. All right. I'm pulling, uh, I'm pulling the the reverse keep lot, I guess you could call it. Um, going against my my team and taking their opponent's defense. I know the Eagles just played the Giants, so whatever. But as I said earlier, Giants D pretty handily was uh, was controlling the Eagles, and they got through to Wentz. Um, you know, they're playing Miami and. My friend and yours, the beard, likes to get sacked occasionally. He likes to throw interceptions a lot. So I, I felt like this was a potentially good matchup for them. All right, all right. Well, I just screwed up and pressed a bunch of buttons I wasn't supposed to um, and deleted my, my stupid-ass music. Oh, here we go. I think I figured it out. Um, <laughs> all right. I think I figured it out. Uh, sometimes I don't like computers. Anyway. All right, man. Um, yeah. As we said, I don't like either defensive picks. Sorry. So, all right, man. Well, that's it for the show. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Good luck in your semifinal matchups. Hit us up on Twitter if you got some questions. Check out the rankings on the site. That's probably the best place. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see you next week in the finals. Peace. F-F-Pi bet.